Hello, this is Professor Kinney, and today we're going to look at drawing a banana in Adobe Illustrator. I want to begin with a fairly simple, intuitive approach to drawing using the pencil tool. And if we select that, we can begin by creating a fairly simple outline for the banana. I'll begin here with the stem and draw the body of it. Include the curvature in there. And I don't really need to worry if I don't get a perfect rendition right off the start. I'm going to finish this by holding the Option key down and it closes that banana up. And then I can use another tool known as the Smooth tool. And you'll notice that as I stretch across this, it removes additional anchor points and serves to smooth out that banana rendering. If it doesn't work completely, you may want to resort to using the selection tool, then clicking on the path and adjusting the location of the various anchor points to get a shape that you feel is a satisfactory rendition of the banana. You can also work the direction lines as well to alter the nature of the curvature and with just a little bit of tweaking you can get a fairly faithful representation of a banana. And I'm going to go with that shape. And there we have the path. I'm going to fill it just with a basic yellow. And then I'm going to apply the mesh tool to the banana. I still think this curvature here needs a little bit of work. So perhaps I'm going to pull that out a little bit. Just going to take the snap feature off so that it allows a little more fluidity in the rendering. I'm a little happier with that. I'm going to go with that shape. Okay, so for starters, we want to use the mesh tool located here. And then using the mesh tool, I'm going to decide where my highlight and shadow details are going to be. Again, this is being left to chance because in applying that mesh, because it's a non-rectangular object, where the mesh points will map to on that object is highly unpredictable, but we hope for the best. I click down, it's generated a mesh. We can see some overlap in the mesh here, which generally is not ideal. But you can see it's subdivided it into a quadrant here, 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 and here. What I'm going to do is work that quadrant as best I can to generate as smooth a gradient as I possibly can using the selection tool. So I'm going to try and untangle this to the best of my abilities, but you will notice that there are certain kinks that have been put in the wireframe. This is just an artifact. It's really based on the fact that it's an irregular object and it's trying its best to generate uh, a rectangular grid between those points. So I just untangle it, like I said, as best I can. And now I will curve this down the way. And you can see that there's naturally, um, it's naturally following a curvature that's common to the banana can often see this that there's a facet or a face in the banana 
um, and that there's usually an angular ridge in these areas. And I'm going to go with that for now. And then I'm going to lay down some more uh, mesh. And it will follow this already established curvature. Meaning, if I click down here, you'll notice that it's following that established curvature. And likewise, if I click over here, it's going to do the same thing. Now what I'm doing is allowing for the creation of an edge and a quick transition from light to dark along that edge. So let's say the sunshine was coming in from this area. We would fully expect that these pixels here would be much lighter. So if I take this yellow and I lighten it up a little bit, um, you can see already that we have a lighter face on that banana. We might even have an extreme highlight in this region here. And then a quick transition back to a much darker color. Here I'll add in a little more black. And you'll notice it's not best to simply add black in. If you hold the shift key down, we can add proportions of other colors in as well, which gives us a much richer blending ability. I'm going to do the same here, hold the shift key down and move these colors in. Maybe add just a little more black in here. And I can add in more of the other colors too, just to give a richer, darker color than normally would be given if we just added black. So you can see already that we've sculpted two facets of that banana. And it can be quite convincing. Let's move over here. And this end, um, there's still a fair bit of work to do. And don't forget that we have the ability to add in later. I'm going to select this. I'm going to sample this color down here. And I'm just concerned with giving the basic coloring at this point. The very obvious light and shadow. Later on, with masking technique, we can accentuate this even more. So again, just picking this up here and distributing color. And you can see it there. Now, you can notice that because the gradient is moving off in this direction, that we have the continuation of this gradient running outside the perimeter of the banana. Now again, this is something that we could accommodate by bending these gradient lines at this point to give us a more pleasing transition from light to dark that follows the contour of that banana in a more realistic fashion. More like this sort of thing. We would expect this area to be much darker um, so I'm going to use, switch to the masking technique now to handle the subtleties of tone and shadow and highlights. So if we look at this I now want to establish some texture perhaps. I've already preloaded into my brush palette from the brush library located down here. I've already established some brushes that have been loaded in. I've got some spatter. I've got some other brush textures in here. So let's use one of the brushes. Choose the brush tool. Choose a brush pattern. And then choose a stroke color for my brush. In this case I want to be using CMYK. Choose a color. Choose a very dark brown. And then apply that brush. And I can do multiple overlays using that brush until I get a satisfactory texture. And I can mix it up a little bit and perhaps use some deep reds as well and do an exploration of texture in that area. Now, 
at this point I can also add in more texture in this fashion and select those elements that I just created I'm just using the shift key and the selection tool and I can apply some blur effects. I'm going to use a Gaussian blur just to transition those effects a little bit. In addition to that I can use the appearance palette and set the opacity to multiply. And I could even use lower opacity settings just to give some subtle transition in these areas. Again, using the appearance menu, I can always alter these effects, increase the blurring if need be, and change any of those opacity settings as required. And You'll notice that the texture is spilling out over the edge of the banana, and this is where we need to use uh, the layers palette and the masking technique. So if I expand layer 1 and I make a copy of this original mesh, so I select that, notice it's indicated that it's selected. If I hold the Option key down, I can drag a copy of that mesh. Now I actually want that mesh to be at the very top of my layer, so I'm just going to move that up. I could use the Move to Top command if I wanted to. I'm just going to do it manually. Now with this mesh at the top, I'm now going to use the Object path, offset path, to create an offset. Now usually this is to create a much larger or much smaller version or copy of the, the original shape. Here I'm going to create an offset of zero, an exact match. It generates a new path. Notice the difference. One is a mesh, the other is a path. The path is the thing that we want because meshes cannot be used as masks. So I'm just going to remove oh, I'm just going to remove this mesh layer. Now that we have this path, and because it's at the very top of layer one, I can select layer one and request that a clipping mask be made. And you'll notice how it changes. And the result of that is that everything I've created on that layer only shows within the confines of that path. Everything's masked. So I can experiment with a variety of different settings here and perhaps even add some Gaussian blur. Let's try radial blur. And Again, change its opacity, work on multiply, and perhaps set the opacity slightly lower. And that gives us the top of the banana. And now we wish to add some scarring, which is very typical of a ripened banana. We've got a ripe banana color, so we would expect to see some spotting and scarring. So let's put that in as well. So from here, we'll choose the brush. We'll choose some of these spatter patterns, and we'll just lay them in. You'll notice that it's automatically putting the default radial blur on there. I'm just going to remove that effect. Just remove the radial blur. And you'll see we've got some spotting there. It's a little bit too sharp, but I'm going to set it to multiply, set a transparency of around 50%, 
and let's add a little Gaussian blur. Effect, blur, Gaussian blur. Or we can go from the appearance menu, blur, Gaussian blur. Let's apply some blur to that. And you'll notice that it sort of dissipates the effect a little. Again, we can try some other brush strokes. That one seems to work quite nicely. So I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to lay down another brush stroke here. And I quite like that too. I'll keep that. Throw another stroke in. I really do like the effect that this brush is having. Although, I'm going to try another one with a much smaller brush and see what effect that has. So I switch the brush, select it, switch the brush, and it's giving me a much finer level of spotting. I'm going to leave it at that and maybe even add in additional shadow detail. I'll use the blob. Um, the blob tool I will fill in brown, no stroke. So if you look at the color palette, we've got a brown stroke. Uh, we may use some Gaussian blurring, so it's already set up for us in the menu. Opacity, I'm going to use multiply. Uh, for the time being, I'm going to use 100% opacity. Well, I'm going to switch the Gaussian blur down at this point, minimize it. And now I'm just going to draw what I feel would be a legitimate shadow for this area. And I don't need to worry if I require additional handling. I can add to it with this blob tool. Just like this. And there's my shadow. And at this point, I can select those items and I can apply under the appearance menu various levels of opacity or add the blur Gaussian blur renders itself out and I will drop the opacity around 60% and change the blend mode to multiply to give a richer interaction of color. And there's my shadow. And there you have a banana rendered using the mesh tool, uh, using a combination of masking, layer masking, and uh, brushes for texture as well as the appearance menu, the Gaussian blur filter, and the opacity setting for blend mode. Thank you very much.